All right, we'll get started at 8.30. It's uh, Tuesday, October 17th, 2023. This is the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen of the Town of New Canaan, 8.30 a.m. And uh, first item on our agenda is our minutes from our last meeting on October 3rd. Any comments or corrections? None. I move we approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, public comments. Members of the public are welcome to provide comments to the selectmen on agenda topics, schedule for review and or vote. Comments may be sent electronically to BOS distribution at nocanaCT.gov and we'll read them before the end of the meeting. Does any member of the public wish to we speak? One. Good morning. You would identify your name and address? Uh, Bart Codd, 28 Conrad Road. Uh, I had uh, a few questions regarding item 16, the Vine Cottage. So um, uh, I believe that the cottage was recently completely repainted. So I'm kind of wondering why, why it'll be put up for sale after it's being repainted now. Um, my other concerns are uh, that the owner of the adjoining property, to my knowledge, was looking to buy the Vine Cottage at the time that he bought the Red Cross building. So I'm kind of wondering again, why this is you know coming up then possibly for sale now. And he would probably look to combine both of the properties and to you know, put up a larger building there. And I'm also wondering if it's um, a historical building, which <laughs> the Red Cross building was and how that would play into any development on the project. Thank you for your comments. We'll address why when we get to the item and, uh, and there'll be a whole process if it's gonna, if the RFP is gonna be issued. So any further comments, anybody on Zoom land? Uh, nope. Okay, item three. Bye. I'm gonna move to um, add an agenda item, which is a discussion and vote on expansion of the town's fields committee. So I move to uh, amend the agenda. Sorry, what, what, what's going to be it? To it's add a discussion. Discussion? And... Yeah, sure. Second. Yep. All in favor? Thank you, Aye. Kevin. All right. What does that mean? <laughs> we can discuss anything. <laughs> Dash <laughs> board cameras. Chief? morning we are requesting the purchase of eight in-car dash cameras which are now required by the state uh, we originally had budget approval for six but with the increase in the three new officers for the, to cover the school resource program um, we're looking to add two additional dash cameras to their our original uh, budgeted request so it's going to increase from 78,561 to 102,050. Any questions? So we're getting two new cars too for yeah, the. We have, okay, we so that'll have, come under a different request or have we, you? Yeah, uh, we've already received some of the new cars. So what we'll probably do is trade in less. We'll just keep two or three in our inventory. So we won't necessarily purchase three additional. We'll just not remove I see. the three from our fleet. Got it. We'll keep them. Chief, what, board. while we're at it, <laughs> what's the status of the SRO search uh, personnel? Well, we're not searching for SROs. We're, we're searching for three new employees, but yeah, we're yeah. in the process. Exactly. We're exactly. Interviewing, you're not uh, looking, you're, you're looking for cops. We're, we're doing the background check on, right. on the people that we've interviewed. We interviewed people last week. So we're doing the, we're doing the hiring process and we're slated for, uh, three seats in the police. Man, how difficult is it for an, a town in New Canaan, a, a town in Connecticut to um, to get three cops as soon as possible? I mean, I, I got to believe it's, it's I mean, a process, just to get it's one, a process that we one police officer. Yeah, it's a process that we can't rush. Right. Um, we have pretty high standards in New Canaan and we're not going to diminish those standards. Right. So, uh, you know, we have identified people to move forward in the process and if those people wash out we'll start the process again right. but we we're on track and and fortunately um we, we've been lucky and we found great people um so we're on track and, and we're on track for a, a january start date for the police academy which would put them to a, an approximately a june graduation right, right. of 2024 so that we're on track for all three that, that's yeah. the, oh, that's yeah. great that's that's great so we could be geared up for 2024 Absolutely. start of the that's, school. That's yeah. the plan. Good. Good. 
So this is a state mandate? It's uh, state law. To, uh, but we were doing this before the state mandated. We had body cameras. <laughs> the dash camera system is also mandated by uh, state law now. It's been useful. It has. There you catch, go. Catch a cop doing something right. There you go. All right. <laughs> okay, I move we approve this request from the PD uh, to enter into a contract with Teleco in the amount of $102,050 as discussed by the chief uh, in car dash cameras. Second? Second here. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Okay, we have a guest today from Canaan Preservation Alliance, Neely Sticknoth, and also Wes Haynes, who's the executive director of the Merritt Parkway Conservancy. Thank you for coming. This is Kathleen's request that we get an update on the Churchill District Initiative. You always respond. <laughs> Use the mic right there. So uh, we were requested to give an update. Uh, last we were here, uh, uh, we had requested some funding to proceed with the uh, Churchill His Dark District list national listing application. And we you know, have. Can you just pull that a little closer so everybody yeah. can hear? Oh, don't get okay. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Don't get <laughs> Bill will be mad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've completed the application. Uh, it has gone to the uh, you all have a copy of that. Mm -hmm. It has gone to the State Historic Preservation Office where it was approved unanimously by all of our state experts. They were very impressed with the extent of the uh, district. There are uh, 79 structures involved, buildings, structures, objects. Uh, and um, that's like out of the, and I believe it's 17 are non-contributing, 79 are contributing, which means it's over 80% of the of the houses that are there. And it's and that's a pretty great number for such a large district. Um, usually what they'll do is do a much smaller district to try and, and get that number to be something like that. And the idea that we have right here in New Canaan, started from 1731, uh, a district that is that compelling is is wonderful. And the whole point of the national listing is to honor that and celebrate it. So this is not an expansion of the local historic district. This will not be overseen by the historic district commission. This is an overlay. It has nothing to do with our local God's Acre district. Uh, well, it, it incorporates it. it it's it not, it's not an expansion, but it includes the 24 houses in the current state. It's an overlay. So those that are in the in God's Acre have re, uh, local district have re, are also in the Churchill uh, historic district, uh, but they and the requ the requirements that they have to meet in God's Acre, they will remain the same. But the houses that are in the Churchill Historic District, Down Seminary, St. John, those do not have to meet. They are not part of our local district. They will not be overseen by the Historic District Commission. As a matter of fact, all of these national districts are not overseen by any commissions anywhere. That's not the point. It's it's honorific. And as you know, Kevin, with uh, Waveney, uh, that was uh, list nationally listed four years ago, five years ago, has that? Eight years ago. No. Yeah. Seven years ago. Se se yeah. Well, seven years ago. I opposed it. Right. Seven time. years ago is when, <laughs> is when <laughs> that's right. Seven years ago is when we uh, got the approval to proceed with the listing. And I think it took us a, a couple of years to get everything pulled together and get it approved. But you were against it for very specific reasons. And have any of those reasons come about? No, actually, I think in retrospect, I was talking last night to Steve Carl, who also opposed it, because it was a tie vote at the town council, and uh, this first selection was. I forgot how I voted. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was for it. Pro, yeah, I'm sure. I, Tucker, Tucker was also. I, I think. No, she wasn't on it. You weren't on the town council at the time. No. Yeah, but I, how, how did you vote? <laughs> <laughs> I convinced a lot of people to vote against it, and then and then I realized because there was. Um, rumors or suggestions that it had negative things and there's been no negatives that i've seen um on the other hand uh, the town like new canaan is rarely gets grants um for almost anything 
and uh, one of the prospects was getting grants to restore Waveney. And uh, that's probably not out of the question, but that's one of the reasons we, we wanted to do it. So, Right. And, and that's the same situation for Churchill Historic District. Anyone who would like to take advantage of these grants will now have the ability to do that. And then uh, that all and, and, and federal tax credits, federal tax credits, or even grants, but they will have to, it, there's a process that it has to take place. They have to let, you know, apply for it ahead of time. You can't have it, you know, change your furnace and then hand them a bill, that sort of thing. They, they have to be alerted of it. But if you don't want to use tax credits or grant money, you don't have to, and you can continue to do whatever it is that you want with your house. So you can add solar panels, you can change the windows, you can you can do whatever you want. It, it has nothing to do with anything. And you can also demolish a building. Yes, you can. So, What's the downside of being part of the Churchill District? Um, frankly, there really isn't any. Uh, there has been a lot of misunderstandings with uh, being having a lawsuit go against you, but that's what's, what is interesting uh, SEPA, in other words, uh, I'm sorry, you, can you expand upon that, that yeah, I will. lawsuit? What, what, what well, it, 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 there seems to be this rumor out there that if you uh, ha are in the National Historic District, that your neighbors can sue you if you want to take your house down. Well, number one, your neighbors can sue you no matter what, that having nothing to do with living in a, in a, a historic district. But more importantly, um, it has to be really significant for that to kick in through the state. With 80% of the structures uh, contributing to this historic district, uh, no single house along Seminary or St. John's is going to impact the district. The only time that the state and national care is if something significant is going to actually uh, have the historic district listing removed. So, for example, something like uh, if the congregational church decided they wanted to take down their church for with having no reason at all, that might be something that would be brought to their attention. But it would have to be something as significant as that. And when you say brought to their attention, is that at the state level? Or... That's right. Okay. So, so I think that Wes maybe should explain a little bit about, because he had been with the preservation office and he uh, knows the process of how that, that all works. So I'm Wes Haynes. I'm a preservation advisor, a volunteer to the New Canaan Alliance. And uh, Neely asked me to come here today just to talk a little bit about the National Register. So the National Register was a creation of the 1966 Historic Preservation Act that, uh, and it's the cornerstone of all preservation policy within the United States. Um, and we have the, in terms of internationally, we probably have some of the weakest uh, preservation protections and, and provided by the National Register uh, because we have such a strong sense of property uh, ownership in this country. And so the National Register was created to provide incentives rather than disincentives. So there are incentives, um, as Kevin mentioned, for tax credits uh, for uh, any property owner on the National Register. Uh, there are uh, grants for nonprofit owners of uh, on the National Register. And then there are also certain protections against federal undertakings. So for example, right now, uh, the Southport Historic District is confronting uh, a proposal by UI to run a giant power line through the center of the Historic District. And the Historic District is the main cornerstone of protecting the neighborhood from that power line. Now, a power line may never be proposed for New Canaan, but I mean, there are always transportation issues, uh, road widenings, perhaps the rail extension that was proposed originally for Ridgefield may be built someday in, in some master plan. Affordable housing too. Uh, affordable housing um, that that uh, that could come under that, uh, a, man, a state mandate. So, um, so it does provide certain protection um, against those kind of uh, state and federal undertakings. Um, the the, uh, the the rumor um, about the the SEPA action, which comes out of the uh, Connecticut uh, Environmental Protection Act, um, is that uh, that anybody can sue uh, to protect uh, pre prevent a demolition in their neighborhood. Uh, or in their historic district, and uh, that's simply no. not uh, not a, a true fact. With outside of the context, um, the, how did that rumor get 
Well, it was it was um, it was distributed um, in a flyer that went to all the neighbors, and it was also um, repeated in New Canaan. In New Canaan, to to all the own property owners in the district, and it was also repeated by the New Canaan Historical Society in their newsletter. Um, but it was completely out of context because um, truly the only uh, entity that really can um, get an injunction against demolition in a historic district is the state historic uh, is the state attorney general, and it is a long and lengthy process uh, that has many gates in the way that need to be opened uh, for the uh, attorney general to to do that. Uh, first, the the state historic preservation office staff has to basically agree that the um, that the uh, that the demolition will damage the historic district to the extent that it will re result in the delisting of the district. It would lose that much integrity for any single uh, residential property owner. Um, to my knowledge, uh, no single residential property owner in any historic district has ever been challenged by SEPA. It's happened with um, major commercial buildings in downtown centers, but uh, but not with, uh, with uh, residential properties. So as Neely said, the Churchill Dish District was just named after the Congregational Church. If they had the loss of that, that could challenge uh, the, the 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 integrity of the district. Um, secondly, it, and the so once it gets through the staff and they would review it at that level, it goes before a commission, and the commission would hear both sides: the reason why the property owner uh, would want to take the property down, and the reason why uh, the citizens of New Canaan would want the property to be preserved. And um, only after that there is a uh, discussion that there's no feasible or reasonable alternative to demolition would it go, go to the attorney general. And the attorney general uh, doesn't always take every case that, that is passed on to them from the Historic Preservation Commission. So it has only been used, to my knowledge, twice since 2018, or uh, since uh, it hasn't been used at all since 2018. But um, in 2018, the last two SEPA cases were one was in New London. Um, and the other was, um, I forget where the other one was, but it was a commercial property. So uh, it um, it is uh, a very rarely used um, instrument, and it's uh, it's unique to Connecticut. Uh, the the other forty nine states do not have this provision in their state; uh, they don't have a state statute for this. And I'm happy to answer any questions. About That's very that. helpful, Wes. Any, any further questions for Wes? Yeah, just two other questions. So the Historic District Commission, which we have, and as well as the Historic Review Committee, and you said they're they're not governing this church. Is there any uh, chance that they would ever say, look, let's expand our mandate to include the properties in the Churchill District? What's to prevent them to do that or... Well, enable to, them to do that that's up to our, our local historic district well and the town council has to approve an expansion so that would all just be okay so there's two bodies that it would have to go through and then the last thing and this actually um relates to something that um what one of our um constituents has just raised so uh if we consider vine cottage now as, as this is in the his churchill district any sort of impediments that the town would have in terms of that being part of the churchill district no, in terms of sales, in terms of no, no, it 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 will be the same as as anyone else selling their house. And uh, in don't the, you in don't the have district. to report to anybody up at the state or anything? No, no, not at all. Okay. Um, it's it is surprising that Vine Cottage is not in the local historic district. It's you know it it, it stops right at Red Cross, and then we have Town Hall. So it, it it that may be something that the historic district commission is going to um, review. But and and go through town council and you know all the process is required. But but the national listing would have no impact on the sale of Vine Cottage if that's what the town or anything of Vine Cottage, right? Okay, okay, great, thank so, you. That's all I have. So three weeks ago, the state historic preservation office voted to recommend this to the feds. What's the process now? They are um, right now. They are. Uh, there were some comments on the document. Uh, so they are editing it. And if anyone else has any comments have since comments. you have reviewed yeah. it, um, please send them to me and I'll forward them on to the our consultant, our uh, PAL organization. And they they are, they are uh, revising it and then it will be packaged up and, and head down to Washington. One of the comments I, I had mentioned to Neely was that the reference of, to God's Acre 
and that you know we the town and congregational church has agreed that it yeah. is recognized as a hallowed burial ground and right it's referenced as a park in here so we we just want to clarify that that's that's that's, that's got to be changed we spend a lot of time on that so <laughs> get that right a lot of time um and and then they they uh the shippo uh representative felt that it would uh just be a couple of months to before we heard back uh, we mentioned that waveney had taken so long uh, during that time it the process was much longer this i think it goes to show how this is so honorific now that it's not being you know every every item is not so significant to have to be reviewed <clears throat> but the point is uh you know, some people went out asking people to sign negative votes. And there was a, a poll taken by SHIPA. Um, and um, they were, it was represented to them that you could be sued, which you just explained that that was only under this special Connecticut statute. And only the attorney general has ever availed themselves of that, really. So that's Extremely one. Rare. And that's what, so that's one thing. Um, and the other thing is, you know, we decided to support this effort with funding because we did think it supported the, uh, uh, preventing the Red Cross building from being uh, taken for affordable housing because of what, for all the reasons that were discussed at the PNC hearings. And I think Thursday, the Historic District Commission has a has a meeting on uh, the Red Cross building that you, um, uh, we don't want to see the Historic District, which is the hist current Historic District, destroyed by a huge, oversized, dense, uh, affordable housing projects and so we thought that this helps in Greenwich a developer proposed a uh, development and then realized it was a federally registered historic district and he withdrew the, the proposal so that's why we decided to help this effort the effort uh, has merits on its own as described by Neely I would say too you know if preservation has gotten a bad name um, <laughs> you know we fought over the kerosene barn on Richmond Hill Road and we fought over the library legacy building um, and I think you know a town like New Canaan as you said we go back to 1731 where uh, New Canaan was founded and we ought to recognize that and preserve a lot of our history and uh, so that's what this is all about that, yes it's the preservation aspect which is why how we got involved and and it is something that all of our neighboring towns have have historic districts <laughs> um, I think Ridgefield has six of them. Uh, Wilton has four. Darien has one. Never mind Westport. I mean, it's everyone else has them, and and so it 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 seems um, unusual that a town like New Canaan, as beautiful as New Canaan is, that we are not celebrating this as well. Yeah, and if if if, if the state or a judge <clears throat> doesn't respect the sanctity of historical districts generally in the state of Connecticut, you should move out. I mean, that's this is crazy with respect to affordable housing or any other power lines or whatever, whatever it may be. Right. I think we've covered it. Any further? Yeah, just wanted to questions? clarify. I, I don't know, my view of it was it's not a defensive tool. No. Right? It, it, it's <laughs> really, it, it, not for us. I mean, maybe it was for you, but uh, but it, it was really- You voted that, for it too. I beg pardon? <laughs> you voted for it too. Yeah, yes. the Churchill District. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And, oh, and we didn't vote. It was it was the we funds voted for the funding. The we funds. voted. Oh, and that was under ten thousand. Oh, so that was your no, but you call. voted to approve it. No, we but, didn't vote at all. We don't vote for contracts, but under ten. But anyway, uh, but that's it. Wasn't meant to be a a defensive tool. I mean, this this is as you say. There's some benefits to uh, those who who live there and and work there, and in terms of and, grants, and, and it's a wonderful thing for our town to do. So, you know. The next step would be to even uh, take Main Street and Elm Street and then begin to do a historic district there as well. I mean, we walking around with the state historic preservation officer, Jenny Schofield, she, she's like, of course, New Canaan would, should be a national, nationally listed district. And these are all things that are positives for New Canaan. Or mid-century moderns. Right. right. Well, and actually, for that matter, so, so the Merritt Parkway is the nationally registered landmark or what's it called no it's it is a it's the state's largest national registered district, district. so it, it would have the same status as, as is that uh, the church. entire length of the merit 
uh, 37 and a half miles, just between the Housatonic and the New York line. Got it. And that has had ramifications for what the feds would do in terms of federal standards for highways and stuff. Yes. Yeah, it is <clears throat> because 80% of the funding that goes into the repair and upgrade of the merit uh, is federally funded. Um, it all has to comply with preservation standards. So that's why the parkway looks uh, very different from the Hutch um, and even very different from the uh, Wilbur Cross when you cross the bridge. Uh, they don't they're not on the register and the federal funds are not ex, not quite as controlled in how they're used. OK, this is great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for everything you do. And Rose, thank you for coming. So, OK. That brings us to. Another another gem, another gem, Rob. Bristow Sanctuary Stewardship Agreement, which Rob drafted, <laughs> and we've made some edits too. Tiger, good morning. If you would describe this, Rob, and just another public-private partnership. Thank you. Can I, can I just give a few? Sure, go ahead. Way of background. Yeah, yeah, you should pull the mic. And pull, the the, Rob, pull the mic towards you. I'm sorry. Is it on? Yes, yeah. it's on. But um, pull it close. I I should add that the. The uh, late latest version that is before the Board of Selectmen was approved by the Land Trust at his meeting last night. So we are ready to sign it when the town is ready to sign it. Just by way of background, so the, the town, of course, has several public-private partnership agreements for open space, most notably the, the Nature Center, one for Owen and one for Bristow, the, uh, sorry, uh, Waveney Park. The way of the park conservancy, the ones that come to mind. Um, the Bristow Sanctuary is now 99, in its 100th year, it's 99 years old. And for the first 90 years, there was a public private partnership at various times with the Garden Club and then with the Audubon Society. But for the last nine years, um, it has not had a public private partnership agreement. And for probably the seven of those nine years, you could see it if you walk through there. There's been uh, a Robin, remarkable sorry to interrupt you. What happened with Garden Club Audubon? Why, why did they? I, I think it was, from what I hear, I think Garden Club was, uh, I don't know about the Audubon Society, sort of merged into the, in, in New Canaan, into the land trust. Okay. And and no one sort of did anything with it. The Garden Club goes back a bit of t time. I, I I I've heard that at the time a sort of aging membership sort of lost interest or didn't have the energy or the, uh, you know the 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 the, the people with the, the the willingness to go in and and do things and, and in the end it just fell apart. Um, it, at a time it worked very well. I understand, but I guess. Are these things, <laughs> for whatever reason, I don't know. Nick, I mean, this is all second hand, so I, I don't I, really I, know. I appreciate that. And sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I just was just, just not wondering, not, you know, no, what, not, not what, what, what what fell out. It's, it's, it's back nine. So but, the last two years, you know, thanks to the leadership of the Conservation Commission, particularly the chairman, Chris Shipper, working in tandem with the Department of Public Works. I mean, there's been a remarkable transformation leading up to the 100th uh, uh, birthday, which is uh, less than a year away now. And we want to keep it that that way. And I think public-private partnerships are important for, for this this sort of thing. And we've, we've seen the benefit in those other town properties that I, that I mentioned. And I think in this case, where it is a, nat it is a natural uh, uh, native plants. It's basically a, a, a New England forest uh, with some some nice trails in it. Largely, uh, the land trust, given the sort of properties that the land trust owns and stewards, as uh, close to four hundred acres in town, is the best organization uh, to to enter into a public private partnership with us. And in fact, if it's a, the first the first project um, starts this week, which is the installation of the uh, uh, pollinator garden in memory of Cam Hutchins. I mean that that's going to happen starting starting this week. That's the sort of thing that uh, the land trust will do. This is primarily advisory um, and maintaining the bird feeders and the bird houses. That sort of thing. It's not a fundraising thing, so it's very different from say the Waveney Park Conservancy. Capital works, capital projects will still be done by the town. There may be some private funding, 
uh, but it's primarily to draw on the skills of the land of the the land trust uh, to to help in an advisory fashion to steward Waveney for the hopefully the next hundred years and beyond that. Um, the chair of the conservation commission, and I think that's going to change soon, uh, is an ex officio member of the land trust board. So that provides an automatic sort of liaison between the Conservation Commission and the town, if you like, and, and, and the land trust. And the modus operandi for working with public works and uh, parks and rec, that'll all be worked out once this is approved. So that's all I got. I mean, Tiger and I have gone through the agreement. I've gone through it with John Howe. There's been some last minute revisions, but they're pretty minor. Let me just mention one other reason uh, we took it out of the agreement, but the fact of the matter is that the restoration, renovation of Bristow has been done in conjunction with the Friends of Bristow. Yeah. And there's a fund at the Community Foundation for, called the Friends of Bristow, which will be transferred to the Land Trust, which is a, although it's a nonprofit, it's really the alter ego of the town, because should the Land Trust ever go out of existence, all the property reverts to the town. Exactly. In 1967, when the Land Trust was created, it was really created to do for the town what the town could have done itself, you know, preserve open space. Mm -hmm. The big difference is the land trust is obligated to open its, pro its properties to the public and the town for our open space is not obligated to open uh, property to the, uh, to the public. So. Right. Yeah. No, good point. Thank you. Tom. There is the, I think it's in excess of a hundred thousand, I think sitting in that. 150. Town. 150. So Tiger, you have any thoughts? <laughs> we, uh, we met Robin and I and, and John met um, to discuss the agreement um, overall and, and uh, their philosophy as to, you know, what they wanted to see and, and whether or not, you know, it was in conjunction with what we were thinking. And uh, we're in agreement as to what, you know, in, in theory as to, as to how to move forward. You know, we've had a good relationship with the, uh, the friends of Bristow. It's really just an adjunct to the Conservation Commission. We've been working with the Conservation Commission now for four years, five years on be doing Bristow. She'll be done. Um, the last bit will come to you hopefully next session in a, in a couple of weeks. We're working through that last phase four bid. Then they'll work through the winter into the spring and uh, get Bristow done for um, for the party uh, for the celebration in, in uh, later that year. So uh, with all the with all that done, then it comes down to just management management of the parcel. We were able to get an additional twelve thousand dollars in our budget in the parks budget for you know maintenance of Bristow. So I think that that combined with uh, some uh, work from the land trust uh, will serve the property well. So in that regard, you know, for example, the agreement provides that the uh, land trust will feed the birds. The town would never feed the birds. We would never feed the birds. No. <laughs> and uh, so the of the hundred fifty thousand dollars. In that fund, um, Chris has suggested, Chris Shipper has suggested they spend 5% um, a year and that money will be used to feed the birds among other, other things. Right. So that's an example of something. Uh, so, you know, I, I had a good part in, in the Waveney Park Conservancy Agreement with Bob Salert. And um, the spirit of that agreement was that the Conservancy could propose that the town was not obligated to do anything that it disagreed with. So even though the Conservancy was founded like the Central Park Conservancy, which by contract manages Central Park for the city of New York, the city of New York does not manage the park. Central Park Conservancy does. Uh, the Conservancy here um, is an advisor, an advocate, and a funder in the case of a uh, waving conservancy. And in this case, there's no obligation for the land trust to spend money on Bristow, but it will be an advocate and it'll be a manager of programs such as feeding the birds. So that's the spirit of that's the spirit of the agreement. Yep. So with respect to section three, uh, town's reciprocal commitments, town will designate designate an appropriate town official as the representative, as the liaison. Who who's the town there? Is that board of selectmen or the first selectmen or I think, that's board of selectmen. I think for the board of selectmen? Board of selectmen yeah, I think to like, like it would be Tiger, because Tiger is the most directly involved in a lot of the uh the uh capital projects the although the enhancement projects should be as you say the fifth leg of the projects will be done and was well, the liaison supposed to be a, a, a is that town employee or is that yeah somebody else okay. town employee yeah. okay just add i mean it could 
it could be a town employee like Tiger, or I, I suppose it could conceivably be the um, chairman of the Conservation Commission. I, I had in mind writing this that it would be a town em employee, but that's up to the Board of Selectmen. The Conservancy has, well, the Waveney Conservancy has the Recreation Department director, the the uh, first selectman, and who else? Tiger, Tiger. our ex officio members of the board. That is mm. the chairman of the Parks and Recreation Commission. So, that, so you know, we have a lot of representation on the conservancy if we want to formalize that with the board of selectmen. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 would, I, I think we just follow what or we did with we, Waven. We yeah. can leave it to the new new, new administration. Yeah. To, new administration. To, uh, <laughs> like we're going to leave a lot of things to the new administration. <laughs> it could be the first selectman. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> I, I just said that the wording just says town official, and I think that is a specific. Uh, I think it's an employee, sure. or it's a first selectman, or uh, right? it could be. It, it could be a yeah, selectman. Could be anybody. Yeah, it could be anybody. Official. It's it's. Is that unclear. a broad definition? It's okay. Unclear. Okay. Well, that was my question too. Maybe just some clarity about who that will be. That that would be great. And then just on the, I know it's not in the um, in this agreement, but on the Friends of Bristow. So I was just thinking about future fundraising opportunities. Is, are the Friends of Bristow Park going away, or is, is that being folded into? It is going away. It's going away. Okay, so that's going into the land trust. How do we guarantee that there are still people who are interested in specifically Bristow? Uh, how do they? Uh, make donations to that if there's no longer any friends. Gotcha. I think the details are still to be worked out, but I I, I have in mind um, <laughs> as the incoming chairman of the land trust that there would be a separate fund, probably still parked at the community foundation, identified and dedicated okay. specifically to this, but okay. rather than being a standalone, right. we call it designated fund, it might be the, the land trust already has funds at the at the uh, agency fund at the community foundation so right. i think it would probably stay there and i as i see it a you know a if it don't a, want a to separate specifically donor fund to right. attract uh yeah because they're, <laughs> they're pro probably burning people that will donate to a fund like that that may have less interest than the other activities Correct. of the yeah. land trust yeah. right got it we also have a special projects fund in the town dedicated to bristol so what was happening was the friends were taking their money, depositing in the town's special project account, and then we were running the money out of there. Got it. So buying the bird feeders, uh, some of the seeds, some other things that they wanted to see happen. So um, the Fran the St. Francis of Assisi statue that's coming back, they've yeah. been funding that into their special projects account, and then we've been running that project through that account. So there's similar. There's another avenue as well. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? No, nope. none here. I move that we approve the proposed Bristol Sanctuary Stewardship Agreement. Uh, it's on our tablets, not the one that has confidential on it. There's nothing confidential <laughs> about this one. <laughs> and uh, any, uh, I, any second? Second. Further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Rob. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Ice rink. Who's doing the ice rink? Tiger. Yeah. Oh man, ice rink huh? is winter coming. Jeepers! This is a great meeting. All these wonderful things. This is Tiger. Who's this gentleman? This is Scott Rowe. He's with uh, NC Rink Inc. Um, Tom couldn't make it. Gene couldn't make it. So Gene, Gene, Gene should be on. Oh, Gene's here. Oh, I'm sorry. So Gene's on. Apologize. Uh, Tom couldn't be in presence. So Scott is here. Scott is basically the project manager for everything that's been happening on site. So he and I and John have been talking through all the work that happened last year um, and then what to do going forward. Um, so in looking at it, the uh, the agreement expired with the NC rink on March 15 of 2023, since it was an agreement for the winter of 22, um, the, the subsequent winter of 22, and then the fall of 22, um, and then winter of 23, I guess you would call it. Um, so we're at a point now where we're coming back through the cycle. So we need 23, 24 uh, agreement or moving forward from there, 23, 24 and onward. Since this was done for to get them started for the first season and then roll into the next season, we can do it on an annual basis or you can do it on a, on a, a longer term. But in essence, we weren't looking at changing any part of the agreement per se. The agreement um, is it, it's, it's been working quite well. Um, 
the uh, NC rink donations for some of the operations that they have get deposited into a town special project account. And then we run the money out of there. So their grant that came in that $200,000 grant specifically had to come to the town. We've been running through that grant. They have approximately $70,000 left in that. Um, and then they have monies of their own um, in their own accounts. And then depending upon um, what the expenditure is, whether it's a capital expenditure or an operating expenditure is dependent depend upon whether or not it'll, it'll come straight out of their funds or come to the town. Is NC Rink still soliciting? Yep. Yeah, we accept all donations. Um, we're not doing any active fundraising. fundraisers specifically. We did one like the White Buffalo that was a specific fundraising right. event. Um, we are hoping, you know, we are, again, still soliciting funds. Um, at this point, we don't have any events, fundraising events planned, but we do have social media presence. We're, you know, looking to get. So um, people are still giving money. Yeah. Absolutely. Is Gene the treasurer? Gene, are you the treasurer? Uh, believe it or not, Tom O'Day is the treasurer. I'm I'm president. Although I do most of the I do most of the bookkeeping, if you will, or, or counting or tracking of funding. What kind of balance sheet does yeah, the yeah NCAA exactly have? exactly? We we have about uh, fifty thousand dollars in the bank. We have about ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars of what we might call accounts receivables. As uh, Tiger just mentioned, there's seventy thousand dollars approximately from the state funds left over. Uh, that's where we are in terms of uh, finances. Where we, what we have now. Well, last year you got a state grant as well as a, a big donor gift. For, so right. That, right. Yeah, but there were some a lot of capital expenditures to get up and off and running um, last year that they won't have right. this year. What were the capex? They had well. They had to buy the resurfacer. They had to buy a lot of other right. supplies that they had, and also the um the the initial setup. There was uh, some additional monies to run additional conduit, water lines, things of that nature that they uh that they paid for. Those are one time. Those were yeah. one time. Yeah, and yeah. also at yeah. the time that we did it, we hadn't paved the lot, so uh, when they did it the first time, um, the setup was quite large. Now that the the lot is a lot flatter. I would have to say the grades across it are a lot more um, helpful towards the rinks installation. Um, I think that the the cost of installation each year will go down. Then they'll come to a stasis point where this is how much it'll cost. So you'll see some of those op some of those initial costs to run the rink will will drop. Um, any liability the, issues that we've had? Didn't have any. To be honest. Um, we have cameras set up right. in the location to take a look at, you know, different areas. Um, I think we had one fall, but it didn't arise to anything right. um, at the time, thankfully. Um, so, no, I, I, I can't speak for many complaints at all. Is there an AED on premises? No. I think the cap went in the, in in the, the, in the bathroom. Bathroom. Section right. of the bathroom. Yeah. This time of year, there's an outdoor one there. Maybe right. you can stay outside in the cold. Right. I think we brought it inside into the storage area. So it's there's one close by. Um, again, we have, like I said, we have uh, several cameras on site uh, to take a look at what's going on, specifically for the town side to see if there's any liabilities. Um, we're looking at. Uh, How's the usage? That's the first guy. It was, I mean, we've heard nothing but positive yeah. response. Yeah. Um, we got really really close the winter started 22 or the year the year before we actually opened so as tiger mentioned that was a lot of our initial expenditure went and getting the rink operational but we we didn't actually hit our window once we got the grant uh we got the money from Tony boucher so we we didn't open that year we lost a lot of the funds but last year we were up and operational for a, a pretty solid season a lot of positive response we sold season passes which was a great sort of gauge of that and we I mean, that was, I would say the majority of our um, sales went to the season pass. So there was. Is that Duquesne residents or non-residents too? Non-residents are, okay. are able to get okay. It's open to the public. So. And there's no dis uh, there's no difference between the cost nope. as there is with the Waveney pool, right? Or yeah, no, Banco pool. Yeah. Same adult rate, child rate, family okay. rates. All, so. But the point is, this is not a town operation. This is a license right. to this right. independent right. nonprofit to run this rink just like, like they do in Westport. And uh, so uh, just just a couple of questions, if I can, on the license agreement. So uh, presumably you're going to be changing, obviously, all the dates on the operating periods and the term. Um, mm -hmm. And so then the other questions I had is there was a uh, comment here that uh, up until uh, after the winter of 2022, you can't do any hockey games or scrimmages. 
Is that going to be permitted after now in the new year? Or uh, I would not. No. So based. No, oh, no. Yeah. Okay, so this will remain, and the date will change. Correct. Yeah, we're, right. we yeah. don't have any uh, okay. class above the board, so it's not set for. Okay, time. that that's great. And then um, it says the facilities provided by the town must be returned to the town in the same condition, subject to normal wear and tear. And this is again no no later than March twenty twenty two. What what kind of facilities are those? The bathroom facilities is it's, that where it's the, well the parking lot, the adjacent areas around it, since the Zamboni's parked you know nearby, right? And the, the parking lot itself, so they can't necessarily drill into the parking lot and do things of that nature. We didn't have any problems no problem. last year in okay. the transfer back over. Okay. Um, this year we're looking at the the NC rink was looking to get in just after November, but we've had a lot of rainouts um, for softball and soccer for a good amount of time so right now they're slated to finish on november 11th and we'll bring in the rink after that okay um at that time and then allow them to and when come we in. say so we is that the town that brings town it in allowed them to come so in. we do have yeah. that obligation so no they, 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 no we don't do anything we just uh, offer the lot and say okay we, oh we don't uh, bring the the ring no, in. That's, that's, that's that's you guys do that okay right. although we do store the truck we do store the we do store the rink itself okay correct right now it's stored up at talmud Hill on the top tier the sixth or seventh tier uh, aquariums right there with their equipment. It hasn't seemed to be a problem. We haven't gotten a complaint about its location or um, from a resident. Um, I don't even know if they know it. It's actually there to be quite honest with you. Okay. Um, so we do, we do store the rink. Uh, but other than that, that's the, that's about our extent. They, they bring the rink to and from, we don't have any, uh, any obligation there too. Okay. So, and then the other two quick, quick ones, uh, private instruction, is that going to be limited, uh, as, as cited here, or again, it's just yeah, for we, the staff. We did that a little bit last year where we had, um, fully, in, you know, insured and vetted instructors that, that were able to provide lessons. We're looking to expand that program just a little bit. Um, you are. Okay. So that would be for the younger, the younger age students primarily. Um, we have some opportunities to do it at times that are slower when preschools might be out regular. So that'll be modified in the license agreement because right now it's just limited to staff of uh, st staff instructors of the um, it's like of the uh, town's recreation department. We'll go beyond that. Uh, we'll we'll take a look at that. Just okay, sure. that's under we'll section fourteen. Expected. Section yeah. seventeen, gravel parking. Is there still gravel there? No. Okay, so that needs to be paved. updated. Right. Yeah. Okay, and then and then there are also uh, responsibilities of the town, <clears throat> and again, it references the gravel lot, et cetera, um, and the the bill that the town may bill the the NC rink uh, is a thousand per skating season. Is that changing at all? Okay. okay. Um, and the NC rink bears the cost of installing and removing the rink during the team. The turn. Well, how much does it cost to do that? And that's all. Born. It, it varies. We have a, a contractor that manages the setup and operation, but there's everything from putting in the, the box underneath that has stone dust. The rink gets built on top of that. So we have um, a contractor, Mario Lopez of ML Builders comes in and, and builds the rink. Uh, thin ice management who runs the rink over in Westport at the Powell rink there. They um, build the boards, put the the mats down, run the chiller and all of that. So okay. they, they operate the rink during the season and then they also take it all down. And then we have the same people that come in at the end of the season and okay. get it back to a parking lot. Great. Okay. Those are my only comments on the license agreement. So John parks and recreation commission recommended this. Yes. They approved it as, as a, as a recommended use for the park. I was wondering what actually why why this is a license and because P and Z doesn't get involved with approving the use. No, they gave them a special permit back in November of. Oh, they do. Okay, they did take action once. So this is a continuation of that. Yeah. Presumably. <laughs> Presumably. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> any further comments? Any, None here. Uh, I move we approve this request from Public Works to continue an agreement with NC Rink Inc to uh, utilize the property waiting park for an outdoor public skating rink as described by Tiger and Scott. 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 Second. Second here. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Thank, Thank you, Gene. Thanks, Gene. Thanks. Watch that treasure, though. <laughs> <laughs> Land use purchase order increase. 
Good morning, Sarah. Sarah Carey. So I am requesting um, on behalf of planning and zoning and inland, inland wetlands that an existing purchase order um, for a transcription service provider be increased to $10,000 um, or over $10,000, um, 10941 to be exact. It is relating to four pending appeals that we have between the two departments um, relating to the 830G applications we heard in 2022 and 2023. Um, the invoices we anticipated being under $10,000 and then they came in and unfortunately they were over $10,000. So we're just requesting that it be increased. Um, the services have been completely rendered, so they should not be increased past the 10941 I'm not sure whether this is here, but go ahead. Any questions? None. None here. Okay. I move we approve this request from Planning and Zoning and the Inland Weather Department to uh, increase the uh, purchase order for fewer reporting transcripts in the amount of $1,141. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Something more substantial. John. That was substantial. <laughs> Everything's substantial. Yeah, exactly. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're looking to enter into a contract with. JGB Sports of Middlesex, New Jersey, for supply and installation of 15 foot high netting on the north side of Dunning Stadium. That's up on the top of the hill. Um, there is a little small section of netting there now. And what happens mainly at lacrosse, but other sports too, but the lacrosse balls will hit that hill and bounce up. So we're protecting both the parking lot and there's a walkway right there right. with people moving. So it's going to be about 200 feet long, um, 15 feet high netting. There's a similar netting, which was installed by JGB Sports on the south end um, to keep lacrosse balls from bouncing over and ending up in the woods. Uh, we, we went out and we found three quotes for the work. The JGB is the low, low bidder. Uh, and the other part is we're looking for um, 16,578.63. And just to make sure we would like a contingency of $1,660 on top of that 10%. So the total props, um, project would be 18,238.63. But with that said, the All Sports Booster Club would like to donate $8,000 towards the project. 8,000. Yes. So, the so this is the boosters, not NCAF. This is the boosters. This is the booster club. Right. Okay. Yes. So the town's true. That's great. You know, we, we're not expecting to use the contingency at all in this project unless we run into a stone or something that has is more excavation. So we're hoping we the town's portion will be eight thousand five hundred seventy eight sixty three. Does that netting remain up throughout all seasons or you take it down after lacrosse or? No, it will remain up during the sports seasons. We'll oh, probably take it down for just the worst part of the winter which we also do like the netting right. between the water tower turf fields. Right. That type. And, and just taking it down for the winter yeah. without ice Stenson. hanging on it really helps it last long. January, February. And how long is the expected life of the netting? We're hoping for 10 years. 10 years. I, I think less than that, you know. I can't believe we. this is coming up now. I mean, it, 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 when you think about it, I mean, we've had Dunning for a long time and we've lacrosse had, balls going into the parking lot. <laughs> I mean, I, the kids are faster now. No, I don't have any idea why. <laughs> um, I think it's probably more than anything. You, you watch a few close calls and you say, this net needs to be longer. So, oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Sounds good. I move we approve this request from the Parks and Recreation Departments to enter into a contract with JGB Sports LLC in the total amount of 18238 as described by John for the purchase of uh, netting for the northern end of Dunningfield. Second? Second here. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, John. Thanks, Thank John. you. Mayor Bill. Good morning. Um, I'm just looking to approval to increase uh, purchase order, add $5,000 to the MAC uh, protections purchase order. Uh, we just did our annual fire um, extinguisher inspections. We have approximately 60 fire extinguishers that are past their useful life and required to be replaced. 
and we also need to upgrade the um, fire suppression system in the kitchen hood system at the firehouse. Um, it's uh, non-conforming at the moment, so we need to bring that up to code. So um, we had originally you had fifteen thousand dollars approved, so we'd like to make the uh, purchase order twenty thousand. All that work comes in at about eighteen thousand, and we have a couple of thousand still in the blanket purchase order for little incidentals that come along throughout the year. Any questions? So this will include the replacement of the sixty. Yes, ma'am. Fire. Okay, great. So our, our fire department doesn't <laughs> is in up to code with respect to suppression. Uh, well, their their hood system in their uh, kitchen is is not. <laughs> no, we renovated that building. Okay. Just talked about that last meeting. Yeah, no, that way we did Every nothing in the kitchen. Ago. That was the for the, um, the volunteer division. They right. did the kitchen yeah. over back in the day. It it serves its life. It's just at its end of its right. life, and it's right. just not meeting the current. Lots code. of cooking. Uh, excuse me. Lots of cooking. I would imagine. Yeah. I know to do a lot of eating. <laughs> so. <laughs> I move we approve this request from Public Works Buildings to increase the uh, purchase order for the MAC fire protection in the amount of five thousand dollars. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bill. Now we have Tiger and Steve. Going to join you, like Michelle? Sure. Yeah. Come on. Oh, you are? Are you? <laughs> so, uh, so thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm joined by Steve Beschenstein, uh, the executive, uh, I'm sorry, the, the chairman of the Waveney Park Conservancy and Michelle Crickenden, the executive director. And we're here to present uh, the next work by the Conservancy, which would be uh, the Waveney Woodland Project. Um, <clears throat> the, the Conservancy had done a forestry management plan back in 2016 from 2016 to 2026 with Conwood's um, forestry. Um, and they recommended certain things to, to uh, transpire. Um, it's actually a very nice document. If you have a chance to take a look at it um, in the area. And one of the areas to, uh, to look at was the area North of the cornfields themselves. So they've taken care of the Jenny meadow now, and then the area say to the East and then to the North, um, areas two and three um were areas to uh to look at it's about 15 acres um to then supplement that work and then that actually would help save the meadow a little bit as well so if they do some work in the woodland area it'll actually help the wet the the meadow thrive so they went out and got two proposals um and they accepted the proposal from Pennington Gray. Pennington Gray has done some, uh, did the Jenny and Meadow, has done some additional work uh, in and around the, uh, the, the parcel itself, um, specifically around the uh, Anderson Pond and other areas. They've done very nice work for the Conservancy, and they'd like to continue that agreement with, uh, with Pennington Gray. And in essence, they're looking at opening up the woodlands um, through some forestry mulching in the area, hand clear around some of the tree trunks to open up some of the areas that are there, try to take out some of the invasives that are that are now coming forward and and um and are in those areas. We have some uh Alanthus, some other, some other things that are that are taking over um in specific areas of the park, not necessarily the entire park, but in specific areas. So they're looking to try to tackle those before they uh before they get any further um along. And then, in essence, any fallen trees limb them so that they'll fall onto the ground and become fodder and um, cover for other animals, things of that nature. So the overall um, the overall proposal was for one hundred and twenty three thousand two hundred and nineteen dollars and ten cents. I added a contingency of fifteen percent for eighteen thousand five hundred um, for a total project of one hundred and forty one seven nineteen ten. The conservancy is funding this project entirely. Um, with their own funds, the contingency would stay on their side of the ledger. We've done that before, as far as uh, the uh, the Jenny and Meadow and the um, and the Anderson Pond, and whereby if we had to draw from it, then the conservancy would deposit monies into the town into their account in the town side, and then we would pay accordingly. But we wouldn't necessarily need them to deposit monies for uh, for contingency work. Um, so we'd be looking at the um, the project at one hundred twenty three two nineteen ten. And then uh, go forward from there. I don't know if you have any questions for the two of them. So this is not really the the agenda says 
construction. It was these. right. It was a, that was a misprint. That's my father should have pointed that out originally. I actually used it. <laughs> I was rushing, so yeah. I was, <laughs> uh, you know, I was listening to one meeting while I was writing this memo for another, and it doesn't necessarily work. So the uh, you know, women tend to be able to uh, multitask better than men. That's what I've heard. So I wound up <laughs> using <laughs> using a memo from before. Forgot that little piece in the middle, so I revised the memo. So you should so have revised the, the memo. The wall. Yeah, that's... that was about the wall. Yeah, so yeah, I used yeah. that that memo as a template, as you can tell. Yeah, the rest yeah. of the memo was perfect, except for the date <laughs> and that. So uh, Tucker grabbed that from uh, the memo. It's not not her fault, mine. So, yeah. <laughs> is there a, there's walkways through the wood this woodland area? Are there any paths through the woodland no, area? None. Uh, okay. Really aren't um, trails around it. Yeah, around, but not through it. Okay, that's correct. Okay. What's next, guys? What's next yeah. uh, in general? I mean, I, I know we've been talking about the merit and trying to put up a barrier. Well, I think that, some will type. Be, that will probably be one of our largest focuses over the course of the next year or several years. Um, so we're in the process right now on the Merritt Parkway Trail. Uh, we've Talk, done a talk, lot of talking to the machines, to you. Oh, no, no, don't move that one. Sorry. So... Uh, we're, right now, we've completed a lot of survey work, and now that's almost about to be wrapped up. When that gets wrapped up, it'll be handed over to uh, landscape designers, and then we would begin coming up with uh, a set of proposals mm -hmm. for mitigating the sight and sound from right. the Parkway along that trail, and exactly what those proposals will look like. We obviously don't know until the, the creative people and the, right. the experts do that. I had hoped that we might have some conceptual drawings and ideas in place by the end of the year. I think that's probably too optimistic at this stage, uh, but I think probably sometime in the first or second quarter of next year, we'll have some much more concrete ideas to then go out and begin sort of selling this project on. But that's a big one. There are a lot of moving parts. It's obviously a long area, um, uh, but that'll be a focus. And I think that'll end up being a multi-year project. And I think it'll also be a transformational project for the public. Fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, look, I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's, it's the crown jewel of our town. And thank God for the conservancy and all the stuff that you've been doing. We really appreciate it. It's, it's terrific. And, and, and the prospect of transformational change on that border with the merit is is really cool. I mean, that's that's. I no, we're, we're excited about it. Yeah, and we've got some other smaller projects as well, um, which we'll be doing at the, at the same time or trying to do at the same time. And um, so we're excited about all of it. Um, I think the park's looking good, um, and we're also very thankful to Tiger and John Howe, who have done a terrific job and been great partners in trying to get so much stuff done within the park. So thank you. And hopefully we'll plant some trees soon with the ARPA yes. funds we dedicated and, and your funds to plant some trees. We're looking forward to seeing that report soon. Yeah, so. that, report, yeah that report from Keith Simpson should be coming shortly. Yeah. Where, where are we going to plant trees? Where they've died. Where they, we take. <laughs> they're, 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 they're right now looking at the, say, from the house, looking southward. So all the, the meadow area and then the, the border between what is uh the meadow area grassland and um and the forested area right that's their mandate at present got it uh, this area that we're looking at is the jenny and meadow and then beyond and then as steve mentioned the trail system kind of extends from there the keith simpson's original look is to look at just the open areas things that we lost some signature trees in those in those locations and then the wood line itself as far as but not necessarily going into the woodland past okay and I should say that the service area, the uh, the plantings have been selected for the service area. So I don't know if you've gone down there, but the, I have a meeting. I have to meet with the, the contractor there today. He just texted me and asked me to meet him out there. They'll be bringing out the plantings very soon and then replanting that area. So you'll see that whole service area project kind of come to life. We repaved the area now so that it's uh, the transitions are better. Um, and uh, it, it, it'll it, within the next couple of weeks, it'll 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 pop. If you haven't already seen it, it's it's looking very good. But the moment the plantings are in place, I think that's going to make a huge difference in the appearance of that area of the park. Mm -hmm. Right.
the entire design will come to come to fruition yeah. at that point in time. That's great. I've already heard a couple of people mention they appreciate the accessibility because Tiger made mm -hmm. sure to to be ADA compliant on that. And that every time we touch anything, we've got to make it ADA exactly. compliant. It's, so. uh, it's it's already been noticed. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. I move we approve this request from the Public Works to, and the in partnership with the Waving the Conservancy to enter into a contract with Pendleton Gray for a total of 141719 10 which includes a uh, contingency for the uh, for the project gets described by a tiger. Second. Second, Aaron. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank Michelle. you. Thank, Thank you, folks. Tiger. Well done. Tiger. Weather service. Oh, so this is the weather service. Um, so this next is uh, an approval of a contract with Weather Century DTN. Steve. You can keep going. Okay. <laughs> um, for $10,836. They, um, they have been our weather service for a number of years. They provide us with critical weather data um, and services they which is critical for our emergency planning and for emergency planning for our OEM, um, for winter operations, hurricane and storm forecasting, winter rain events, sporting events, special events. They have some nice forecasting tools and they have a uh, meteorologist on call 24 seven, who's um, aware of our area and is, is schooled in our area so that we can email him or uh, text them. And then we get a response back within minutes so that we can plan when to bring in our forces or, you know, should we cancel an event, things of that nature. So the overall um, agreement is for $10,836 for the annual contract we pay in monthly installments for use on our laptops or our computers and on our phone system. Does our school system use this? Service? They use a separate system, right? But then we do compare notes to, uh, for every storm event that's associated with a school closure. So we 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 shared notes between Dan and, and Brian, John, Mose, and myself. We share notes as to what what each uh, each person is saying, each meteorologist so, is saying. So we have two different two different systems. Yeah, they use a system that that a lot of the school systems use. Our system is used by Shea Stadium, Laguardia, um, Logan <laughs> Airport. You know, people want to stay open. Contest people want to stay. Right. <laughs> So schools have people who want to stay closed. <laughs> yes, funny person, how you talk to, right? So, yeah. I, I don't remember this coming up. I've been doing it this has a time. I'll be honest with you. It's less, oh, less yeah. than 10,000? It's less than 10,000. Yeah, we were paying monthly. I noticed it was 10,000 plus. Exactly, 10,836. In, uh, in years past, it's been less than 10. Yeah, right. and uh, and yeah, we're trying to, it was- and I knew uh, we had it, I just never remember voting correct, on it. Right, correct, that's right. really, with. we're trying to bring How much does school system pay? I don't know, that I don't know. But we're yeah, trying to bring everything to you that that possibly would exceed the yeah. $10,000 expenditure. I got it. Um, so that's the reason for Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yep. Do they provide a feed that might be shared on our website? You asked me that question, I, I don't know. Question. I got to ask that question, see if we could- I don't think I, that'd be a good idea. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. The uh, you don't two you schools think it'd of, be a bad idea. That's two schools of thought. If they tell us one thing and then we decide to take it in a different sense. direction because yeah. we're a little bit more conservative, we might run the risk of uh, right. of that. I find the National Weather Service to be a much better indicator of what to do. And so that's free. That's free. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Owned by IBM Weather right. Weather I Channel. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything further on the weather service? <laughs> I move we approve the request from Public Works to continue the agreement with Weather Center DTN for 10836 as described by Tiger. For the second. Se second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Joe, good morning. Good morning. So, no. Good morning. So I'm here to, today to uh, release Turner on phase two of the temporary police department work. Turner has been working at 39 Locust for the past six weeks, reconfiguring the board of education space, converting it into a police station. Um, we received our rough and inspection last Friday, so we're closing up the walls now. Um, NORCOM, the state 911 team and the communications work um, has been coordinated and their physical work will start in November. 
Uh, now that we have the final room ready requirements from the 911 team, uh, we can contract and install the HVAC electrical grounding and all the pathways involved to interconnect everything. Um, basically, we're making two complete IT rooms, one being for the 911 and communications and the other one being the dispatch center. The dispatch center is kind of like basically a, nine, a um, IT room. So the Department of Public Works is requesting approval to increase Turner's contract value by 119,500 plus a contingency of 15,500 for a total of 135,000. And the funds are currently available and it's within the, the budget. Are we on time and are we on budget for this? We are on time and we project. are on budget. Yep. Okay. No problems. No, nothing risen. Nothing, nothing. Unknowns. Okay. Nothing. No unknowns. Okay. <laughs> no unknowns yet. Did we always expect to extend the contract yes. once we knew what the cost was? Is that, is that the idea? Well, it was, it was really for the, the, I came to you for, you know, two months ago for the Norcon stuff and the 911 stuff and the dark fiber stuff. That stuff has all come together now. And now we need to just have the, now we know what, what to make the room, to make it room ready where all the power needs to land and all the fiber needs to land and all the interconnections. So um, we always anticipated it being a, another step. Okay. So now that we know, just the process. No further questions. I move we approve this request from Public Works to enter into an extended contract with Turner Construction for one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars, which includes a contingency for the uh, dispatch and nine one one communication rooms as described by Joe. Second. Second here. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Tiger. So this next item is uh, thanks, Joe. Is a uh, is a contract extension for our local roads twenty three project specifically for Harrison Avenue, Littlebrook Road, and Millport Avenue. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that the, the three projects or the three roads were delayed because of uh, work going on for um, Aquarian and Water or um, Eversource Gas. Um, and we're not going to be able to close the roads up for the winter, and they're in rough shape. Um, Harrison, people have been dealing with Harrison since 2018. Littlebrook was... Uh, was slated to be on the town's repayment schedule back in 2018. They decided to come in with this project and we had to hold Littlebrook as well. So Littlebrook was ended at the end of its useful life at the time that they cut it. Um, and Millport Avenue, uh, very similar. So uh, we asked FGB who, who, who um, has the contract for our local roads um, project to come out with a, a proposal for, to put in a thin overlay curb to curb um, across the entire surface to give a nice riding surface for the year um, for the, for the winter and into next season. And they came in with, uh, $108,350. I added a contingency only because if the material thickness changes slightly here and there for 16,250 for a total of 124,600. And this work will be paid for, uh, for Harrison and Littlebrook will be paid for by Aquarian itself, um, as part of their project. And then they'll be paying for the actual mill and pave next year. But, uh, I told them that it was, uh, unsatisfactory that the road is in its condition at present we're not going to be able to mill and pave it and finish it for this year um and i didn't want our residents to sit through in another season of it like this so they agreed that they would come in um and and uh pay for this thin overlay over the top of it and then come back in and pay for the final restoration next season questions good negotiating thank you Tiger, um, sure. A request. Can, can we just um, update the website um, with respect to road construction? Sure. I have more, to. Yeah. They, and uh, the last one was like August 4th. So, yeah, we've been trying to, the, the dates kind of roll, right. but, uh, but yeah, we will put up another one and then uh, I'll put up. Um, I mean, there's just so much going on in town, I agree with you. <laughs> including Elm Street, including. Mm -hmm. 106. I mean, it's just, and, and, and I'm, people are really frustrated. In fact, I literally just got a ping from a, a constituent asking about um, which road Conrad Conrad's different, but yeah, the, um, so that, that's a whole, that's, that's, a that's different, actually a nice surface. That yeah, yeah, nice surface. That's, that's not, that's a different that's issue. A but different issue. my yeah. point is, you know, Elm street, 
People are driving down like, what, what's going on? I mean, <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're almost done on Elm Street. They've got a couple of days left uh, up by um, Franco's Market, uh, Franco's Wines, and then they'll be off site. The problem is that Eversource has to come back in yeah. again and then actually do the electrical work. So they were there yesterday, took up a big footprint in front of Dunkin' Donuts. And that's sporadic work that's really unplanned, meaning that they have the crew, they come in and they do the work. They're not necessarily right. where it's planned in advance. Um, and I, are, I just want to get it out there that we'll it's it not there. us just trying to screw up the roads. No, I'm actually we're, trying. We're, to, we're trying to, you know, Eversource wants to do this. Has uh, we've got Aquarian, which is you know ripping up our roads to to get water to Stanford, not even to New Canaan, and I, I, it's just really frustrating. Um, and and I want us to. I, I want us to. I, I know. I, I, yeah. I want. I, we got. I got your back. I just want to make sure that. You know the message is out there that hey, this is why this street is being ripped up. You know, it's, it's, it's because of Aquarian, mm -hmm. it's because of Eversource, because of this, because of that. That's and fine. I, I just think that's really important, just to, to make it crystal clear to our our citizens as to why things are being done. That's fine. I move we approve this request from Public Works to extend the contract with FGB Construction in a total of about one hundred twenty-four thousand six hundred, which includes a contingency, as described by Tiger. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Josh. You can give us the abbreviated version of this. <laughs> Um, so as abbreviated as I could make it, there should be some bullet points on your tablets, and I'll share it up on the screen as well. Um, these are the uh, preliminary highlights for uh, the year end of FY23. Um, most of these are, are kind of just the conclusion of, of where we've been seeing these numbers trending over the past fiscal year. Um, so I'll just kind of highlight where they, for the most part, ended up. Um, so... The total revenue for the year was uh, 159.4 million or 2.15%, uh, which is 3.35 million over what was budgeted. Uh, this increase was mostly due to um, the over, but uh, more revenue than was budgeted for increased uh, interest on investments for 863,000 due to higher interest rates and more. Um, more money readily available to be invested from either using ZBAs or just a tighter cash flow analysis. Um, increased revenue from the educational cost sharing of reimbursement by 100,000, municipal revenue sharing by 178,000, uh, tax collections being over budget by uh, 2.06 million um, because of just the tireless efforts of the tax collectors department. Uh, Kerma general insurance member equity of one. 121,000 building permits are up over budgeted by 142,000. Um, prior year FEMA and COVID reimbursements, which were kind of an unexpected bump at the end of 350, uh, 385,000, 343,000 respectively. Um, this kind of offsets the lowered numbers from conveyance fees and recording fees, which uh, fell 373,000 under what was budgeted. Um, and also just a lower than anticipated uh, state disbursement of the excess cost grant by 385,000. So that's where we ended up on the revenue side of things. Josh, just a clarification on the tax collections over budget, the 2 million, that's largely because we budget for, for the 98% and exactly. we get 99 point 98.5. 98 98.5, right. And, and we, we get something like 99.9. 99. Okay. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> You remember that well. That's the <laughs> that's the two percent yeah fund factor. Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's not the efforts of the, anybody. So well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, efforts of for board of finance and everybody else. So they stayed fast with that ninety eight and a half. Yep. Absolutely. Got it. Okay. Um. Any other questions on revenue? Go ahead. Uh, so on the expenditure side of things, uh, we're ending the year around. 160.7 million uh, under budget by about a half a percent or uh, a savings of 830,000. Uh, debt service, uh, the driving factors were debt service being 226,000 under what was budgeted because we didn't go to market in FY23. Uh, the Board of Ed has 
about uh, 581,000 in anticipated savings. Um, insurance liability premiums were under by 129,000. Uh, the Parks and Rec Administration was under budget by 217, and fire was under by uh, 237,000 uh, due to different overtime uh, injury and sick, um, as well as some full-time salary savings on those lines. Um, the projected outcome that we had had was about 300, 400,000 to the good on the town side, or about 311 to the good, and the board of had, like I said, at about 581. Um, kind of the notable lines that, that are offsetting are some of the overtime accounts as well as take, um, through the police, um, which didn't have a realized um, salary, saving li sal salary savings line of uh, 142,000 and greater than anticipated legal fees by 214,000 due to ongoing 830G. Um, so we had, in the end, in the end, we had anticipated uh, to draw down on the fund balance uh, five, 5.5 million, but it's estimated that we'll really only be drawing down about 1.25 million on the general okay. fund balance. Any questions on that? Any questions? Great wrap up. Sure. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I could provide for 24 quarter one if you want, but they're very preliminary and there isn't really much anticipated. In general, on, on budget. On budget, yep. Yeah. Um, ahead of budget in terms of revenue, of course. Um, I think uh, we're a little outpacing last year in terms of tax collection rate and um, interest on investments is, of course, still trending uh, much, much better. But uh, expense-wise, we're on budget, yeah. Any further questions? For just, that? I just for this is for September thirtieth, and we're now what October eighteenth. Yes. Yep. I mean, it's pretty. We never had this kind of uh, data right up front. It's you're doing a great job yeah. in terms of uh, collecting all this information for. It's a it's a tricky quarter. time of year, I think, for the whole department going through the audit and getting ramping up sure. for budget season again. So we're you know, um, yeah. well takes done. Time to get things in, get things ready. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Very okay. Well. Finally. On cottage, uh, I think Doug is on as well. Doug Lamonte, our town attorney office. So, hey, Doug. Good morning, Doug. Good. So, how do we want to present this? Um, uh, at the last meeting, you asked that we uh, consider issuing an RFP. So, we asked Doug to update from the prior RFP. He um, we still have a number of changes that we would make if we're going to issue this. Um, but anyway, um, I think you're the proponent of this, so why don't you... Yeah, again, I, the only reason I brought this up um, was because we uh, uh, it became known to me that there was an individual who is not uh, a developer, local developer, to be clear, um, that was very interested in Vine Cottage and approached me and said, you know, I... I very would like to take a look at it and you know might put in I think a market value um, proposal. Um, he he she was aware of the fact that we had an outstanding RFP for Vine Cottage. Doug, I think was it 2017 when we first did this, and then we re-upped it in 2019. 19 and 21, or maybe it's 19 and 21. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Kat. Um, so yeah, it this this board of selectmen um had in the past made a determination to solicit offers for Vine Cottage, which um we didn't really get any good offers, I think. It's suffice to say. Um the individual that approached me um I think is serious about making an offer on Vine Cottage. Um, to be clear, the RFP that we issued in 2019 and 21 said, okay, we're gonna keep Vine Cottage basically as it is from the outside. We will have covenants, um, ease, covenants restrictive covenants, making sure that the appearance of Vine Cottage stays as it is pretty much in, in whole. And I think that's you know important from a historic and a preservation perspective. And we had folks you know earlier talking about preservation this morning. Um, I, 
we this board of selectmen is not going to make a determination as to whether to sell or keep fine cottage the reason i pushed this was because this particular bidder said i really would like to move as quickly as possible um showing intent uh i think serious intent uh to make a, a fulsome offer and, and i didn't want the town to lose that opportunity and the future board of selectmen and the future town council to be able to, to, to lose that potential opportunity to sell or, or not sell. It's up to, it's up to them. You know, we're going to be gone. And um, I, so that, that's why I pushed for uh, another RFP. This would be the third one with respect to the sale of Vine Cottage. Vine Cottage is not ADA compliant. It's not good swing space for the town. The, 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 the outback, the town, you know, the annex, whatever we call it, is a much better uh, use of space. It's much, much more practical. Irwin has its issues too, but, but it's just a much bigger footprint. And the problem with Vine Cottage is you can't really use the second floor um, because it's not ADA compliant. There's no elevator. And if you want to put in an elevator, that's going to be half a million, three quarters of a million dollars. We did paint Vine Cottage and I, I, I supported that painting even though I thought we probably should eventually sell Vine Cottage because they don't think it, it works for the town. I mean, it, it is adjacent property and one could could could, could consider um, a right of first offer uh, as part of this RFP. And Doug, you and I haven't talked about that, but the, the, you know that's something that his his people have expressed to me that you know there might be an opportunity for the town to say, hey, if we want to get it back, you know, maybe we incorporate a right of first offer. So anyway, that's why I was pushing this uh, kind of at the end of the game here. I really wanted to keep it on the table for the next first selectman and the board of selectmen uh, to consider. Well, Doug, I sent you my comments. Um, if, if we go forward with this, I there's a number of comments that I had. And so until we have an opportunity, I don't know if you want to use this time to do that. <clears throat> but um, you know, happy to go through it with you on the phone or what have you. But um, there, there, I would think that there are further updates that are required for this one, which was done in. Um, this was the original 2021, I think. So, or maybe you made thing, some modifications. But I, I had some other questions and and uh, suggested changes as well. It, it would be helpful to to get a black line too. I think. Doug, I'm just. I, I, I didn't see one um, from the prior 21. RFP. Absolutely. I, I'm at your service. So uh, let me know what you'd uh, like me to do. Um, basically, what I did is I took the 2019 and 2021, which were virtually identical, and I changed the dates. Um, not being familiar with uh, items like you know, the building having been repainted, et cetera. So um, it was intended for your uh, consideration and I welcome all comments, questions and instructions. And also obviously input by the three new members of the right. uh, board of selectmen going forward. That, so was, the, I, that was the motion that, right. that we, we approved. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. So um, anyway, work in progress, I think. If, if, if there is a decision to go forward on this at all, but there's still some work that needs to be done. So we're not moving for action on this today? Are you asking for action further than what we just discussed or? How do you feel about that? I think I've given six or seven I, different I, comments. Yeah, and I mean, so it, until it, those are it, Issuing an RFP doesn't mean you're gonna sell anything. Right. It's just it's just it's 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 something we had 19, uh, 2019, 20, uh, 21. Yeah, I would move that we issue an RFP. I think subject one, to input from the three, the three, the three select. Yeah. Yeah. The so it needs a board of selectmen, uh, incoming yep. board of selectmen uh, review yeah. and comments and also discussion about some of the comments I submitted. Anybody yeah. might have submitted. So, so, so I, I would move it, right move now. it, move it subject to. That in, that I, I wouldn't move it okay. until okay. we had an opportunity That's to fine. go through these comments and maybe it's our last meeting. Uh, maybe it is. On the 8th, but I, there's just still some open items for me. 
again, and I don't, I don't want the town to lose the opportunity. That is the only reason I'm not bum rushing this. I just don't want us to lose the opportunity, the town to lose the opportunity for a, 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 a credible bidder who, for whatever reason, you know, wants to move quickly. This is not coming from me. Right. I, I think we're moving forward. Good. Thank you for good. sending this and we're everybody's getting comments to Doug. And, and, a, and a black line would be great, Doug, too. I, I know that the changes you made are you know, probably just minimal, just changing dates and, and, you know, here and there, but just that would be great. So we're going to table this. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, and then you wanted to have it. Well, let's finish the agenda. The item 16 over payments of taxes, uh, mainly automobile taxes. Good. I move we approve these refunds and, and tax overpayments. Second, yeah. second, all in favor. Aye. 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 Contracts under ten. Any questions? Nope. Um, legal bills. Move we approve the legal bills on the tablets. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Schedule for the uh, 2024 <laughs> meetings. Oh. Good. 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 I move Good. we approve the schedule uh, on our tablets. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I have no comments, but why don't we take up the last item, the discussion of uh, Fields Committee? Yeah, I, it was mine. I, as I mentioned back in July, I believe it would be beneficial to expand the town's Fields Committee, which presently consists of three town employees to include two additional members from the New Canaan public at large. As a reminder, uh, the Fields Committee oversees the use of all outdoor playing fields in our community, whether located in our parks or at our schools. At its essence, it decides where and when various games and practices take place. In a sports-crazy town like New Canaan, this is a critically important task. The Fields Committee was established pursuant to a study conducted by the Board of Selectmen in the 1990s well before the rapid evolution of youth sports and in particular girls sports. No material changes have been made to the committee since its inception. I believe the expansion of the committee would benefit from diversity, diversity of thought, diversity of background, diversity of experience, as well as diversity simply because the two new appointees would be New Canaan residents and not simply town employees. Expansion of the fields committee has the full support of the New Canaan Athletic Foundation, our highly successful public-private partnership, which has become the fulcrum for capital campaigns to improve our children's recreational and athletic experience in town. As best I can tell, the only substantive criticism of the idea of committee expansion is that it would then be subject to public meeting and freedom of information requirements. On the contrary, I see this as a positive, we can always use more transparency in government and in the operation of our town facilities. This board has previously identified a need for a reinvigorated utilities commission, as well as a new affordable housing committee. I believe expanding the fields committee to incorporate input from new Canaan citizens and thereby enhance diversity would be in a similar vein. This is a discussion, right? This is, mm -hmm. That's what you put it on the agenda, just discussion. I would, I would say um, thank you for that, um, Nick. I, I would say, um, number one, so the, the Athletic Foundation is in support of this. How does um, the town feel about this, the existing uh, members of the committee? We've got a few, a few members here in, in person. Uh, you know, look, I, I, with all due respect, guys, you know, Bureaucracy is bureaucracy, and, and I get that. Um, God bless if Steve Benko were, were here, I, you know, I might not even be making this proposal. And, and, and that's just because, you know, Steve was Steve and uh, uh, what a loss for our town. Um, I, the Fields Committee divvies up the fields, which is really, really a big job. I mean, it, it, it's 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 technical, but at the end of the day, there are some policy implications with respect to choosing who gets to use which field at which time. Mm 
Um, when I was chairman of the Board of Ed, I became a kind of a self-styled expert on Title IX because at the time, Darianne was in, embroiled in some nasty disputes with the DOJ. Um, so I kind of took it upon myself to, to bone up on Title IX. Title IX is, and, and, and the case law that emanates from Title IX is really, really strict, right? It's just a complete numbers game. They, they look at spending, you know, dollars for dollars, girls versus boys. Uh, field usage is part of that equation. So, you know, one of the things that I think would be helpful, again, to diversify the existing committee, it would still be a town run committee in as much as you'd have the three folks that are currently on it as town employees. And then you'd have two uh, members of the public at large. Um, I, I just think it's, it, 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 you know, it's not necessarily something that other towns do, but I think it's, it, it makes sense from a, from a number of standpoints. And, and I'm going to tell you, I think it's really important that we shine a light on the process because there's just too much criticism and it's, it's really not fair to our own town employees who are being asked to serve on this committee. Um, uh, you know, like this is a sports crazy town and um, people take it really seriously. And, 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 and I just, I think this would, I, again, the, the athletic foundation has basically said, you know, we really hope that there's a way forward on this. I, 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 originally the, you know, the ask of the NCAF was to take, take it over uh, entirely. And I said, that's just not going to happen. You know, it, we, we need to keep this in the hands of the town ultimately, but I think having input on a minority basis makes a lot of sense. So it sounds to me like I'm, I'm I'm probably too naive to to comment on this, but I, I would say that you have operational issues, the day to day getting things done. Yeah. How are things, you know, right. that right. that I would you know argue that the the town employees are the best ones yes. to do that. Absolutely. And then there's policy issues. Correct. Um, which address things like you mentioned Title IX and other things that more broadly maybe right. could be helpful. And so I, you know, I, I certainly understand, and I think this is going to be maybe a a, a good item for the new board of selectmen mm -hmm. to take yep. up. But it's 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 I think about the operations of a fields committee, and then the policy that you mentioned maybe is not being addressed uh, well, as can appropriate. I, can right? I address or, that? Yes, please. I mean, a year year and a half ago, the superintendent and I met with the fields committee because Title IX is ultimately the responsibility of the CEO of the town and the superintendent of schools. So okay. it's not the fields committee per okay. se, but we wanted to make sure that we were addressing that. I don't think we have a Title IX problem based upon that discussion we had. Um, I was a proponent of expanding the, uh, committee. the committee to include uh, lay persons, but I really don't think that's the proper, but we're not going to make that decision. No. This, no. this is something that- uh, I'm throwing this out there because yeah. I think it's important. Yeah, no, thank you. And, yeah, You know, we've got a future- Selectman Never. in in uh, in our presence uh, this uh, Online, this morning. Right? So, um, but I, I I do think it's important, and I and and um, I, you know, part of it is just the look of yeah of no. Thanks for raising it. I I think yeah. it's it's a good topic on your list. So, thank you. Further comments? No further comments. Nothing here. I move we adjourn at ten oh eight. Second here. Okay. Thank you all. Our last meeting, I'll say that as a comment, <laughs> is next, you know, is, is uh, November 8th. Three weeks. The election.